Like he does have rally. He does have sharp side, and we just hit like another trinket trade here. We have three. We have three in our deck. It's so possible. Like it's not hard. We can we can like OTK him this turn. Please bail me it. Trinket trade. These are unplayable. Okay, I need a I need to hit a trinket trade off of this. Very desperately. Okay. We're still <laughs> we're still moving. Please. Trinket trade. Okay. This cost zero. Alright, <laughs> we're still going. We're still going. Okay, okay. I just need a trinket trade. Trinket trade wins me the game here. Trinket trade wins me the game here. What? How do I get so many time tricks? I don't even understand. Trinket trade, please. Thank god. Okay, I think we win then. I think we won, because we get our mana back here, and then we get a time trick again, and again, and again. Oh my god, what a game. Or what a hit, rather. I mean, if he doesn't have Sharp Sight here, he also just loses. And we can just prank Sharp Sight into, like, he needs a Sharp Sight right now. He doesn't have it. Let's go! Mmm! God, that chain was crazy. That chain was actually crazy. Hey guys, how's it going? Jason Sensational here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I was feeling a little bit bored. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do for this video, and I thought to myself, what is the most fun thing I can do on this game? And I was playing a little bit of Flesh and Blood earlier. If you don't know what game that is, that's a physical card game that has a lot of zero mana cards that you can just chain together in a row. And it's really cool and really fun. I won't delve into the details, but the fact is that Playing multiple zero mana cards in one turn is really, really fun. And what bet deck to do that better than PNZ Shellfolk? This is Ezreal Victor Shellfolk, the old, the old classic list. Um, does disgusting things with Shellfolk. You can often not just kill your opponent in one turn. Um, with Victor having augment, Victor leveled up, discounting your cards by one less. And the, or your created card, sorry, and then Shelf Oak, which also discounts a created card by one. So essentially, you're discounting your created cards down by two, especially if you have both Victor and Shelf Oak on board. You can use those cards to infinitely scale up Victor's attack. And I've been OTKing my opponent on like turn six, turn seven with like a 20 attack Victor because I can just play out all my cards for free. All of a sudden, I can time trick into a time trick, and then the created time trick is free. Or I play Trinket Trade and I gain two mana, and then I play other cards. It's so great. Um, yeah, that's that's the deck. If you guys have never seen this before, check it out because I think you're in for a little bit of surprise about how disgusting this deck can be. If you guys didn't actually know, I actually do quite like Banal City. I actually do quite like Kyria Shell Folk. I just don't particularly enjoy playing against one specific variant of Kyria Shell Folk. And that would be the Shreema version. But this is a version that I've had a lot of enjoyment and success in the past with. And I thought I'd just try it out here because I saw the list on runeterra.ar. So I just want to give it a try, see what it's like. And I actually won a decent amount of games and it's it's just really cool. If you've never tried this out, you, you have to try it for yourselves. If you can, Because of the intro, the clip, and the games that you see, there's some really ridiculous things that this deck can pull off. But really, basically, it has a lot of removal early game, so you stall till your turn 4, turn 6. You land Victor, you land Shellfolk, then you kind of pop off. Sometimes you have Ezreal, but really, it's Victor that's the star of the show here. Um, and maybe in some longer matchups, you actually level up Ezreal, and then you have Ezreal, Shellfolk for a little bit of a late game. But Victor pops off so quickly in this deck, especially if you have a Shellfolk to pair with it. But that's pretty much the deck. Go check it out. I'll leave the deck list down below in the description and enjoy the games. I'll catch you guys later. Hey, oh, some more Ami TF, huh? I wonder how this matchup fares. Like, we're never gonna have removal big enough for their stuff, right? I'm not sure how important any of this is. Like, the main thing I want is like Victor, right? They could have like a Vengeance. But without Victor, well, like that's the starting point, I would guess. Oh, hey, Victor. Yeah. 
because I think without Victor against this matchup in particular, there's like not that much you could do. So I'm very happy that I was able to find him and a shelf. Shelf up is phenomenal in this matchup. I think we're fast enough where we can get value from the shelf up. I mean, those are fantastic hits for him, holy moly. Yep. So we'll play Victor and then we have Shelf Hook and we have a lot of value to get off of it. If Shelf Hook can stick, which it most likely will, unless he has specifically something like Vengeance. Um, we can just farm a lot of value off of it, and then it just makes their hand very unplayable. Because what their deck aims to do is just play a lot of cheap spells, and we can kind of like counteract that by just making their whole hand very expensive. It's really funny that he got an attack through there. <laughs> Fearsome Poro. Fury. Interesting. Um, I don't know about that one, boss. Very interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't... I'm not sure about that one, though. You can't play Nami next turn because I can just kill it again. And then I can just get to my Shelf Oak turn. So this is looking okay. We have to survive next turn, which, depending on what happens, may or not may not be very easy. So he just like drops like a, mm, like a Shelly here. I guess he can't drop Shelly now because he would just kill it. So any throw he drops this turn, we can just deal with it. If his board is less wide, it's always good for us. Got a Fury. Let me get to kind of just chill this turn. It's very hard for them to develop anything too much. Should I just mystic this? Okay. And now, next turn is Shell Folk, and then we can kind of just pop off. Where I think we're actually in a pretty good spot if that happens. Oh, another sump field as well. Very nice. So what's my plan? I was scared about Nami because I can't kill it this- Oh no, I can. Um, do I just kill it? I'll train my Victor into whatever gets buffed afterwards. I think it's fine if Victor falls here. We have a stress testing as well. So like, we have some pretty decent options. This reduces them down to one Nami in their deck, and then I don't know if they've played enough spells at this point where they can like get a very good verbal turn off. Because right now they've played what, two, three, four, five? Okay, maybe they can, but we'll see. Another glimpse, okay. Now we can get Shelf Oak down and we're gonna farm a lot of value here. Second time trick. Overwhelm? Overwhelm's really good. Like, this could be lethal this turn. Probably not. We're a little bit off. But if he doesn't have Vengeance, he could also just die this turn. He needs to have Vengeance here for Shelf Oak. Otherwise, I can flip Victor, and then I probably actually just win. Oh wow, okay. I think I can win this turn. I'm just gonna pump Victor and get him to 20 plus 3. I'm gonna level Victor, and then everything that's created costs one less. So that's the first goal. I need to level Victor. Okay, these are really bad.
Okay, this... Mm, this is awkward. Okay, this gives me an Entune. No, but it's not playable. Uh-oh. Okay. Hmm. I have two wallops, so I don't think I can actually lose here, but... I was really hoping to chain off a little bit more. If I had a trinket trade off the time trick, I would have... Oh no! Oh, it's cost zero now! Okay, okay, we're in business. We're in business. Because now I can time trick. Yeah, yeah, we're in business now. Because now this is going to give our mana back. If we take Shell Folk, that's free as well. Shell Folk is free. <laughs> oh, that's free. Okay, now I can time trick again. CC. So anything we create costs two less, right? What I'm thinking is I can counterfeit the time trick and then every time trick I get is free so I can infinitely loop time tricks essentially to pump Victor up here. Or I hit things like uh, Trinket Trade and I get Autopuses for mana back. Beautiful. And now this is 4 mana back. I guess it's only 3. <laughs> Got him. So we need Victor up to twenty three. Alright, that's it. <laughs> I guess we need 24 here. Oh, buddy pal. <laughs> we had a time trick. Oh my god. Alright, GG's buddy. Hey yo! Let's go! Was that turn 6? Turn 7? That was turn 7, was it? Turn 7 OTK. Ooh, okay. The Moss is probably the worst matchup for this kind of deck. Uh... Yeah. Units and kill cells is really what we need. Like, if we can remove their... Uh, their Durant Architect on two. Victor as well. Victor is super snowball -y if you can get him to stick. As long as this chime doesn't hit their two drop Architect, I think we're okay. I swear to God! Oh my God, I'm pissed. I'm so pissed. Can you kill that next turn? So we have to take five here. That's so embarrassing, man. <sighs> That's so embarrassing. Might come in handy. Yeah, sharp side we can probably just safely concede here. Oh, this game actually sucked. Imagine not gonna kill it to drop on turn two with Mystic Shot. This doesn't buff itself, thank god. So like we can hit region on Victor and then maybe that's fine. 
Probably still like pretty forced to kill this eventually. Oops, almost didn't play that. I'm still so pissed, man. This Thran Sculptor chime thing. I was, it, was, it was exactly what I was hoping not to happen. Of course it happened. Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? How about you, like, fall over now? Hopefully Wallop is our top deck. Okay. He's one turn off of Galio, which is nice. But the moment he plays Galio, we just like cry, right? I only see how we beat Galio here. You're okay. So he's like threatening Rally, right? We can save Victor this turn, which is kind of cute. Very. Are you dead? No. Is it likely that we're dead here from a rally? Yeah, probably. Oh, no rally. Okay, can we kill him next turn? We're actually like, it's actually possible to kill him. Like, it's not a joke. Like, he does have rally. If he doesn't have sharp sight and we just hit like another trinket trade here, we have three. We have three in our deck. It's so possible. Like it's not hard. We can we can like OTK him this turn. Please bail me in. Trigger trade. These are unplayable. Okay, I need a I need to hit a trinket trade off of this. Very desperately. Okay. We're still <laughs> we're still moving. Please, trinket trade. Okay, this caught zero. All right, we're still going. We're still going. Okay, okay. I just need a trinket trade. Trinket trade wins me the game here. Trinket trade wins me the game here. What? I think it's only time trick. I don't even understand. Trinket trade, please. Thank God. Okay, I think we win then. I think we won because we get our mana back here, and then we get a time trick again and again and again. Oh my God! What a game. Or what a hit, rather. We must all do our duty. I mean, if he doesn't have sharp sight here, he also just loses. And we can just prank sharp sight into like he needs a sharp sight right now. He doesn't have it. Let's go. Mmm. God, that chain was crazy. That chain was actually crazy. Thralls, eesh. I think Thralls is horrendous unless we can double up on like Wallop's rest defense. Um, but I'm probably just gonna keep Wallop in my hand. Is there any reason to keep finance here? There's no landmark removal that costs more than six. Is there a better card than this on turn two? Maybe like Oncologist would be better, but. This looks okay. Having one wallop is good. It, it means we can't double up on it anymore, but hopefully we can hit like a stress testing to double up on that. Even though I think Financer isn't particularly good, I think it's very important to save our two health from the Harbinger. Um, okay. Like we, I think we're forced to like save this health. 
even though it's like not great for us, but I think we're half forced to. The world's a big place. Let's see all of it. Hempo Ezreal. Ages past, yet I remain. His board space is looking a little bit questionable. So like it should be it might be hard for him to get more than three thralls down. And then we have many more plus wallop. So we should be able to survive, which means we just need to crack back on the swing. We also have Shell Folk Victor. If we can hit a Trinket Trade and things like that, you know, it's same same strat, right? OTK Victor on turn seven. Also a possibility if you survive that long. If they only get two thralls out, I think I'm not worried at all. Lifesteal? Lifesteal is really beast. Because they're forced to freeze this at some point. Okay, we'll probably save this for turn 7 with the uh, Curious Shelf Oak. What'd I get? Faded. I think we're at decent pace. The main goal is to get Shell Cloak down this turn. Oh wow, super slow. Very happy. Very, very happy with the situation. Spell Shield. Not quite. Oh, if we don't get a good keyword on Victor, we can't kill him either, huh? So we're kind of relying on hitting like a good keyword off of Victor. Maybe they into my shell folk now. But if their thrall comes out, I can just easily mini morph it on my mana. Come, my warrior. Show me oh. I Interesting. Okay, I didn't expect that. But this gives us a lot of time too. Because we can, he only gets three thralls. Only, but. Hmm. Like, Lissandra's more of an issue, I think. It's it's weird, and it's tough. We'll see how this shakes out. I, maybe it should have been obvious based on how he was playing that. Something like Grackhorn is a possibility. Right now, it's just level Victor first. Hopefully, hit Trinket Trade here. Oh, Lord. Um. Well then, I think that's safe to say that's a very bad outcome. Hmm. Hmm. Wait, his Ice Shard next- oh, we're just gonna lose the Ice Shard next turn. We really needed that to not happen. Ugh, probably have to Thermal Lissandra here. Because I think I need the Shell Folk to stay alive. Why just let me heal? Why didn't you block the two too? I think Lissandra needs to leave the board. 
because this can block a thrall and I heal back pretty much as much health as I can get. So as long as he does have another Lissandra, he can't play Talia this turn, but he could essentially get four thralls next turn. He's a ride negation. Right. Yeah, we're kind of in trouble here because he can just open with Ice Shard. Or I mean, he just attacks then Ice Shard's on stack. anything here. Yeah, that was really bad. Missing on that was so brutal. I can't believe we whiffed. That was so sad. That whiff was so painful. Oh, three thralls. Stun one. Still alive. We no longer have shelf though. So we're not really winning. We have to kill him next turn. And even top deck shelf folk, we can't do anything with it. Alright. Down. Yeah, like, I need a trinket trade there. Or, like, you know, time trick, something there. Something to work off of, but we just hit nothing. So that was kind of unlucky. So I think we, like, we could have, like, ended the game there. Hey, it's Arrows Mac Kuzlin. I kind of know this guy. So they good hand, but we kind of need to curve out into something substantial, like a victor, or like a shell folk, either or. Oh, I gave him an extra s skill on stack. I totally forgot about that. Oh, please no Jin. Uh oh. Okay. I, I, I forgot about that. That's on me. I forgot that. I was like, there's no like rush in killing Annie here, but he got another proc for Jin, which is a little bit annoying. So we need to save this Thermo for Jin. That's like a must. I need a unit here though. Victor is phenomenal. So I'll just kill something with some fumes this turn, and then I'll victor something next turn. I'm not gonna play into stage hand. I think the thing about what Cardi has, Stagehand was a likely possibility. Now that he doesn't have it, it feels a little bit worse, but... Even if we play Victor here, I think we're fine. Like, we're high enough health total, where they don't have enough burn to actually finish the game. Like, we'll just make sure that whenever he wants to play Jin, we have four mana up to Thermo. Like, that's the only way we lose the game. Overwhelm. I mean, we're curving out really nicely. Like, we hit everything we needed on a curve. I mean, come on, game. That's a little bit too easy. Sage hand. Yeah, there's a sage hand, as suspected. Now we'll just bide our time. Maybe could have, like, pranked first if it was the thermo, but 
or not a therma, but a. Know, there's no point now. We'll just play out a unit. And then he has Jin, which is his last card, and then we're gonna thermo it and we win. It sucks we have to spend seven mana on it. But it maybe gives us action to play some fumes before we play the thermo. And we also just have a life seal victor kind of chilling here. Once attack into that, I'll just trade it off for four health, and that should also win me the game. So, the most annoying combo would have been... Why is he playing? Interesting. And now he gave me the option to just sump fumes into Thermo, which is exactly what I wanted to do this turn. And he's still pretty much forced to play Jin. Maybe he thought Tybalt costs more than 6 or less than 6 mana and costs 5. I don't know. Oh, quick attack. Never mind. <laughs> quick attack, Victor. You got it. But... I'm just curious if the only card I'm afraid of here that can kill my Victor is Fervor. I don't think he's. Maybe he's playing Flock. It would really suck if he was. With like Raven Bloom, it's hard to say, but okay, fair enough. Now we need to be a little bit careful because we need to make sure Jin can't get an open attack down, so he can't play Shadow Focus turn. Oh no, he can because it's a four four. Oh, beautiful. I'm really happy we got to play Shadow Focus down because I forgot Jin doesn't gain any stats when he levels. It's really handy. And then again, he still hasn't dealt with the fact that Victor is still here. And now I think we should be completely stabilized because at some point next turn he's going to give me an attack and I'm just going to heal. Let's see what his hand is first. Very rough. Huh? Let's make the fervor unplayable this turn so he can't kill my victor. We can kill his Tybal. We can kill everything on this board. And then his Fervor is dead. Seems good to me. Why can't I play this? Am I not able to play it? Oh, I guess I have to play it first and then I get to play these? Okay. So, hmm. I thought you get to play this and you can play a fastball and stack. But do you have to play this first? I don't know. Kind of interesting one. And what I'm doing here is I strand his or er, his fervor so he can never kill my victor. Alright. GG's buddy. And that's gonna be the games for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. There's some absolutely crazy things that we can do with this deck. So if you guys want to try it out for yourselves, I will leave the deck list down below in the description as usual. Thank you guys so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully, if you guys didn't tune into the Jeopardy last session live with Majin Bay, Puffball Panda, and Aikido, hopefully that should be up on YouTube in the coming days. Um, but yeah, that should be a lot of fun. So look out for that as well. But thank you for tuning into the channel today. Hope you guys are enjoying the content. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow for another video. So peace out, guys, and take care.